I think it's time that we give more love and more attention to this brilliant engine, the Jag V12, because in my opinion, it's rather incredible that it was made at all. In 1971, British Leyland produced the first mass-produced V12 engine, a 5.3 liter lump with twin overhead camshafts and a lot of high tech for the time. A couple years later, in 1975, it was the first mass-produced V12 engine with electronic fuel injection. And then you have this, the Series 2 XJ12. The least loved of the series, in my opinion, the most beautiful one, and the best car the British Leyland ever made. Austin MG Triumph Mini Jaguar Daimler Princess Morris Rover, all with super cover. Great cars and a great deal more. After the third person that just pulled away thinking I have engine issues, let's have a look at the engine i think that's sort of what you get though with a car like this it didn't have the best reputation for reliability however i think a lot of that is not really correct i've had this car for 10 years from two days ago it's 10 years since i've had it and it's always been on the dot it's been a perfect classic i absolutely love it it isn't in perfect condition it is low mileage it's had a repaint years ago which wasn't done that well and that is showing its age in certain places. And I do want to do a complete respray of this at some point, but I also love the condition it's in because it drives perfectly, mechanically, spot on. Air conditioning, everything spot on. But uh, it looks great from, I like it this far away. When you get closer, you'll see it needs some things. So in my opinion, a perfect condition to actually use it. But let's have a look at the business end in here the 5.3 liter V12. This is the first version of the V12, 5.3 with the flat heads. However, this one's fuel injected. When it came out in 1971 in the E-Type, it was meant to be fuel injected. They never got the system working right, so it left the factory with four carbs. They did that until 1975 with the launch of the XJS, they got this fuel injection system going. However, it was launched first in the XJ Coupe and then launched here on the four door and then on the XJS. Often what Jag did at the time that they did changes to the engine to other cars before they launched it in new car. Same thing happened with the AJ6. It was launched in the XJS before the XJ4 just to try out the engine. But this is a 5.3 liter just under about 300 horsepower and lots and lots of torque and already we can see our first sign british leyland logo so everything in the engine is stamped with that logo which is why i'd like to call this a british leyland engine even though this is a 1977 we'll talk about this as if it was 1975 when this system was launched so for that time, I think it's incredibly advanced. If you think about over in the States, you still had carbureted pushrod V8s. You guys went on with the pushrod V8 for a long time. This is overhead cam, one camshaft per cylinder bank, 12 cylinders. Think about that. Fuel injection. This is the Jetronic layer that went into a different Lucas system. So 12 injectors in here plus two cold start injectors. Two fuel pressure regulators, one for each bank, because it's technically two separate fuel rails. Then you have electronic ignition, the OPA system, which um, I guess it was really the only um, issues with these was that they could overheat a bit and that would cause it to stall out later. They moved the module from here up to the radiator support and that pretty much solved the issue but that can be easily solved today with an upgrade kit like this car has so never had any ignition related issues big throttle bodies here on both sides and then we have twin exhausts going out to the back of the car here from the outside there are a few subtle signs that this is the v12 variant 
you had XJ, so 5.3. So if you have this cylinder, it would be 4.2 or 3.4. So that was a clue. And really proud here with fuel injection. And up front, you had a V12 badge in the grill. It said V12. Inside the car, you had two more things to let you know what sort of beast of an engine you had. V12 logo right there. And on the rev counter, see if I can get a close up of that, it says 12 cylinders in the car the luxuries continue lots of dials made by smiths fuel temperature oil and volts you have the speedometer of course the tachometer you have the fuel changeover switch because you got two fuel tanks one on each side earlier carbureted cars had two separate fuel pumps fuel injected cars had one pump with valves that changed over heated rear window map light interior and of all luxuries, you could get electronic climate control, which this car has. Little dial here, you set the temperature of Fahrenheit from 65 to 85 degrees. And a little sensor up here in the, uh, in the dash over there, or here on earlier cars, controls everything and sets the temperature perfectly for you in the car. This being the long wheelbase variant, You've got a lot of leg room in the back, plenty of headroom, and very, very comfortable leather seats. This interior is completely original, has a little bit of patina here and there, but it's just the way I like old car interiors to be original with some slight use. From here, you have a nice commanding view of the road ahead. You can clearly see all the instruments and everything, and because, you know, small pillars and everything, beautiful view of the world outside. For now, let's take this V12 for a drive. Fires right up. Put some air conditioning on. Drop it into drive. And we'll pull away effortlessly. You see a lot of reviews on YouTube of classic cars and often the person that had it has only had it for maybe a couple hours or so to do the test. This, however, is my own car and I just checked my own papers yesterday it is 10 years since I picked this thing up it's a pretty good story actually I was a broke college student pretty much and I had just enrolled at university I got my first check uh, which was supposed to be you know to buy books and things uh, I bought the books I needed used secondhand I used the rest of the check plus a little bit of money I had left over from my summer job and I bought this thing. It's been sitting for 15 years I believe. It took me a year and a half to get it back on the road and that was mostly because I didn't have the money to do all at once so I fixed a couple things then waited you know worked a little bit extra hours waited for my next paycheck did some more things but all I really did was I went through the engines and did all the fuel hoses, the coolant hoses, water pump, you know, things that go bad from sitting and just go bad from age and put it back together. And other than that, just change all the fluids, brakes, of course, all, new brakes all around. And then I had a body shop replace one of the sills and one of the floors because uh, they were just rusty. Other than that, just cleaned it and polished it and got it back on the road. And right when I got this thing back on the road, I had just met um, a girlfriend who is my wife now. And we went on our first trip together in this car. So it has a lot of sentimental value and it's one of those cars that will always stay with me. But why do I think it is one of the best things that British Leyland ever made? Because a lot of you guys are gonna say, well, you know, what about all these other cars? And, that's a big luxury car. Yes, it's a luxury car. Yes, it was rather expensive when it was new. However, if you think about it, a company like British Leyland, which was famous for, um, well, the workers not working that much, um, shoddy workmanship, 
uh, low quality sometimes cars, even though I just want to preface this, I absolutely love Bush Leyland cars. I have more of them. Um, I think it's amazing that they let Jaguar continue with developing a V12 engine during basically an oil crisis and putting it into production with probably expensive to make fuel injection, all these other things, and putting it in these cars. Of the Series 2 XJ, I believe they made somewhere around 90,000 Series 2 XJs, where of about 14,000 were V12s. And then about 1,800 of those were V12 coupes, which I have one. And yes, we're going to get to at some point. You guys have seen it in the back of videos. It's white. looks exactly like this one, but it's a two-door. We will get to it at some point um, of this magnificent car. And looking back on it, I think it's amazing that they just made it. So what's the power delivery like? I think some of the articles from the day described it the best. It is turbine-like. It is silky smooth. You don't really hear the engine running if you are at a traffic light. You can hear this one a tiny bit because I have a slight uh, manifold leak on one side, which uh, I'm going to get to at some point. So you can hear a tiny, tiny bit. But normally, they're completely, completely silent. The noise you're hearing right now is probably the fan and the air conditioning nothing else we're doing 50 kilometers an hour here the engine is basically idling at 900 rpms and if i didn't have the gauges i would not know that the engine is running then if you do put your foot down it picks up right away we're coming up on a faster road here i can show you guys a kick down and some of the power this particular car has the later GM400 transmission, which is a lot better than the earlier Board Warner 12. So I'm doing 50 kilometers an hour here. And there we go, that's a kick down. 3,000, 3,500, 4,000, and we shifted. And we are at the speed limit, or even a little bit above. And it is, so this car is properly quick, even by today's standards and it's silica smooth the whole way. You think that was just 4,000 RPMs, it goes up to 6,500 if you want to. Not something I would do in this car because engine's never been apart. It is about 84,000 kilometers from new and running beautifully, so not gonna push it, but four, four and a half thousand RPMs, I like to push it to sometimes to clear it out. So final thoughts on what I think is the best car the British Leyland ever made. I might be the only one with that opinion, but why well, do you want to think like everyone else? But if you think about it, a high-tech car with you know a really clever independent rear suspension with inboard disc brakes, disc brakes all around, lots of space, very comfortable. For being a V12, it gets pretty good fuel mileage. Uh, 5.3 liter, 12 cylinder, fuel injected, electronically controlled pretty much everything climate control everything i'd say it's a pretty great car for 1975. and with if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and if you want to see more v12 content consider subscribing to the channel that's really what i do as, as a living i work on these v12 engine and these classic jags so i absolutely do love them and i enjoy them a lot myself Till next time, I'm Adam, this was Little Mythic Classic. I'll see you soon.